like, um, well, like, like no one's business. He's known as J. Randolph Sr. And tonight he's going to be on with Doug Knackman, 6.30 tonight for a uh, Derby preview. Good morning, J. Randolph Sr. Good morning. How are you, McGraw? We're doing well. I have a betting question for you, and, um, well, you're the man to ask. So I thought in races like the Derby, where they've got more than 12 spots, that you bought the number 12 number and you got all the horses after 12. Well, that's that's uh, that's what's called a field bet. Right. But at the Derby, there is the main starting gate and then the auxiliary starting gate with six other places, and uh, they have 20 starters. Uh, they qualify by a point system for the three-year-olds. But uh, there's no field betting uh, in the Derby or the Preakness or, uh, uh, for that matter, the Belmont. Uh, but... Uh, you are you are correct. You probably were to track on one occasion or two occasions where you might have uh, been given the field right. with three or four horses right. uh, coupled together uh, and given odds on those three as one unit. But right. Uh, right. that's not the way it works uh, in the Triple Crown. Gotcha. And what about all these? There are 22 horses, 22, 21 horses. Seems like you got a hard time going around the track with 22 horses. Wouldn't it be better if they sort of took some of those horses away? Well, I don't know because uh, it it has uh, become tradition now to uh, fill the starting gate, 20 positions. We have two also eligible horses who could get in if there's a problem with any of the other horses. That decision would be made by uh, noon tomorrow if there's something that goes awry with one of them or two of them. Right. But uh, there will be 20 that go to the post tomorrow, and uh, a, a purse of uh, about uh, $2,400,000, the winning uh, uh, horse and uh, trainer and owner, uh, uh, they're going to pick up about... Uh, Oh, a million uh, three hundred thousand. But uh, the money is important, of course. But uh, at the same time, this is the championship for the three-year-olds, and uh, it has become such a, a traditional event that uh, it uh, really is, um, as many people call it, the most exciting two minutes in in sport. Well, I don't really care how much money they're going to pick up. I want to know how much money I'm going to pick up. So let's. <laughs> Let's get to this. Who am I? Who am I Don't betting? On? Yes, uh, I, I have a I have a a unhealthy affinity for Irish war cry. Should I or should I not? Should I stay away? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with the uh, Irish war cry. Uh, he's the number seventeen horse, and I think uh, he very definitely could be in the mix. Uh, he is uh, stuck out pretty wide. Uh, It'll be interesting watching the races today there, and they just had the first race of their Friday card, which features the Oaks, the uh, Phillies Derby. But uh, I think, you know, in, in all honesty, Irish War Cry, uh, War Cry is trained by Graham Motion. A great story with the rider, Raj Marah, who's coming back from a, an injury that almost uh, killed his career. He's going to be one of the favorites, and uh, I think uh, I think you might have a, a good feeling about that horse. All right. Now, I uh, expect the, the favorite's probably going to be Classic Empire, who will break from the number 14 hole, and uh, that's one of two horses trained by the Canadian Mark Cassie, and the other one is a horse called State of Honor. But uh, tonight at 6.30, as you mentioned, uh, our uh, – Churchill Downs preview and uh, handicapping seminar. And Doug Knackman, uh, as I can tell you this, uh, put in a great deal of work uh, looking at these horses. And uh, as always, he's trying to get you a price. And uh, this could be one of the most wide open derbies in years. And uh, the payoff could be, uh, as we like to say in the horse racing business, big balloons. <laughs> uh, so the last four years, Jay Randolph Sr., the favorite has come in after years and years and years of the favorite not coming in. What what happens uh, the last four years that now the favorites are, are coming in? Well, it just uh, you you have trends in, in, in thoroughbred racing just like you have trends in any sport. 
but uh, it is a bit unusual. We'd have four four favorites win, and uh, we might have a favorite uh, win tomorrow. I, it'll be interesting to see who the favorite is. I think Classic Empire, the 14, uh, McCracken, the 15, as well as uh, Always Dreaming, who is the uh, five horse, uh, those, uh, I think, uh, appear to be uh, the, the favorite is probably going to be among those three. But there are going to be some horses running tomorrow that are 20 and 30 to 1 that uh, Mr. Knackman believes have a shot. So there's a chance to win a lot of money. Uh, what do you say? What, 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 what long shot do you think has a chance tomorrow? Well, I... Uh, I kind of like uh, a horse called Hints. Okay. And uh, the number eight horse, uh, the Frenchman Florine Giraud is the rider. Uh, Steve Asmussen is the trainer. That horse is probably going to be about 15 or 20 to 1. I think he's got a shot. Uh, uh, this is a horse who's a big closer. One of the things that I would suggest to everybody watching the races tomorrow, and they're on NBC Sports Network, and then later the Derby coverage comes on uh, the big NBC network tomorrow afternoon, uh, see uh, if there appears to be a bias. There's been a bias this week at Churchill Downs, and it's been the inside rail, and the, the horses that have been close to the rail have seemed to uh, get some benefit from that. But uh, showers over there today and tomorrow expected, so it'll be interesting to see if the conditions change. But uh, it's always uh, an exciting time, and uh, I don't think uh, we're going to have a Triple Crown winner this year. Uh, this is a good bunch of three-year-olds, but uh, I don't think there's a definite standout, and that's why I think it's probably a pretty good betting race. All right, Jay Randolph Sr., one more question here, uh, two more questions here, and that is this. If I call Shannon and get his tips on who he's looking at today, is are you infecting him with your thoughts, or does he have his own thoughts on this race? Well, believe me, I can only tell you, and I talked to him just about a half an hour ago. He's already at Fairmont Park uh, uh, playing the races today and checking things out. But uh, Mike uh, listens to a lot of people. In the final analysis, he makes his own decision. And uh, quite often it's uh, a decision that you don't expect, but uh, he, he's, he's a very astute handicapper, and he's also very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> better be lucky then then good jay in all That's of right. in all of your years of broadcasting did you ever do any horse racing yes i did i did uh i worked at nbc for many years as you know and when the breeders cup came online uh gosh uh, what has it been 25 years ago i guess uh, i did the first three breeders cups for nbc sports working with a, a great character from New York, Harvey Pack, who was the uh, selection man for the New York Racing Association. And I've done a couple of others over the years. I, I did the Bluegrass one year for Anheuser-Busch, and I did the Arlington Million a couple of times. But as far as calling the races, I've never done that. That's a real art form, and uh, it, it takes a tremendously talented and very special human being to be able to uh, get up there with those uh, uh, binoculars and uh, watch these horses run and at the same time communicate to the audience both on television and in the stands uh, who's doing what to who. It's, uh, it's, it's a really great talent. Yeah, and I suspect one or two of them got the horse wrong, right? Hey, and it's number three. Wait, it's number seven at the post, right? I mean, that's... It's happened on occasion, yeah. yeah I suspect. <laughs> uh, Jay Randolph, we'll listen to you and Doug Knackman tonight at 6.30. Good luck with, with your picks. Always good to have you on the show, my friend.